Jesus says in Mark 16, he says, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they will cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And uh, y'all, many of you, most of you had a part in sending Elizabeth out this summer that had been on her heart for some time. And uh, we appreciate the prayers and the financial support and the encouragement that you have given her and blessed her. And uh, that's what Elizabeth did. She went out and she's going to share that this morning. So, again, we just want to say thank you. She's grown into quite a young lady. <laughs> as, a, as a father, it's, you know, it's, those of you that are parents, you can relate, you know. You remember when they were born and then you see them grow up and send them out. But uh, bless the Lord. We're excited about what the Lord did through in with Elizabeth this summer. Through and, and you know, in her. Because she's not the same as what she was when she left. So not only did the Lord use her to bless other people, but the Lord blessed her through this process. So, Father, we just thank you for your spirit being over Elizabeth and in her. Thank you for your peace over her. And uh, Father, just help her to communicate the things that are in your heart this morning, Lord. The things that we need to hear. Open each of our eyes to see, Lord, how we can be a blessing. How we can go and make disciples. Even if we don't go into the the far parts of the world, Lord, that there's so many people hurting and, and needing you right around us. So, Lord, open our eyes to see that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. There's a lot of people here. <laughs> birthday party last night and the little boy was great. He's a little boy that I babysit for and he opened one of his big presents from his parents and he walks outside and everyone's like, oh, where's he going? And his mom said, he's going to go outside and scream because he's so excited. <laughs> and sure enough, five seconds later you hear, ah! And that's how I feel. Like, obviously I'm not going to scream in the microphone. But I feel very excited. Um, I just, it just feels like it's like bubbling out of me. Um, let's see, so I went to Alaska. A lot of people ask, why did I go to Alaska? And that's a good question, because there's many other places that need Jesus just as much here, other countries, wherever. And for a long time, I really had a heart for people that struggle with depression, for people that um, are suicidal, have drug abuse, have alcohol abuse, just kid, people that are hurting. And that's just been, like, I don't know how God will use me in that in the future, but it's just a big passion of mine. It's just loving people. And Alaska is a beautiful state. You can see, well, I think it's beautiful um, from the pictures, but it's also a very hurting state. Um, there's a lot of kids that don't have dads. There's a lot of kids that do have dads, and their dads don't tell them that they love them. There's a lot of alcohol abuse. There's a lot of sexual abuse. Um, there's a lot of depression because of the darkness is very exhausting to people. And so, like, like, yeah, it's beautiful, and God is definitely there and everything, but there's also, like, this spiritual cloud that can hang over it because of the different things. Um, there's roughly, there's about 280 different villages in Alaska. Um, I had the pleasure of <laughs> going to three of them. Uh, so you'll hear more about that. And whenever I first looked in the missions trips, I was like, I didn't even know who to go with. I was like, I don't know. So I found this group, and they're called Global Expeditions. Um, and I really prayed about it, and I had a good feeling about it. And I was like, gonna, I was originally going to go to Africa with them, because I've always wanted to go to Africa. And I'm looking, and I was like, oh, they have an Alaska trip. Like, that's awesome. And because I love Alaska, um, ever since I was there when I was 11, so about 10 years ago, um, I really just wanted to go back. Like, I just love it. Like, love the ruggedness, the beauty, everything. And I saw that, 
they hadn't posted the new trip dates for this summer, and I was like, oh my gosh, and I was like, well, I have an internship in Washington, and I have to help camp this year, and so I kind of told God, slash asked, <laughs> you know, my personality, um, I was like, God, if you want me to do this Alaska thing, you're going to have to open doors for me, it's going to have, I mean, I have two free weeks between my internship and camp, and that's when it has to be, and because other than that, I mean, I have to go to school, and I have to, I want to help with camp because my little girl is graduating this year. And so I just prayed about it, and I like came to the conclusion, like if I'm supposed to go, I'll go. And so um, I I checked the trip dates whenever they post them, and sure enough, I stopped. I had to stop my internship a couple of days early, which they were completely fine with. Um, but it was just exactly in those two weeks. So I would get back, and three days later, I'd start camp. And I was like, all right, I'm going to need some supernatural energy here. I have a lot of it naturally, but... Um, but I just love Jesus and so much, and I just can't believe all the opportunities that he opens for me. And um, Some of my PowerPoint, I might say that I did something, but just know that it was Jesus working through me. Like, I don't mean it like, oh, Elizabeth is so good, and she can just do anything. Um, but another thing that had attracted me about the Alaska trip was, and people, some people are evangelists, and that is great, we need those kind of people, I am not one of those people. I can't just go up to someone and say, hey, do you know about Jesus? Like, that, that doesn't, I just can't do it, like, it just, I don't know, it's very hard for me. But on the Alaska trip, when I was reading the description, it said, um, we want to go up and serve the villages and love people. I can do that. I love going and helping people out. I love spending time with kids, running BBS. I can do that. Like, that's perfect for me. So that was, like, another confirmation, like, okay, you need to go on this trip. So I was like, all right, God. And um, so a little bit about Global Expeditions. It was founded by Ron Luce. Um, you may have heard of Acquire the Fire. It's, like, a big youth conference that they do. And he is the one that founded that. And they have trips that go to 79 countries, 70,000 plus short-term missionaries, and it's non-denominational, which I really like because it's like, anyone can come. And their website says, we strive to contribute to achieve greater unity in all that we do within the body of Christ. And I thought that was really cool because I like when people can work together. Who do I pointed at that? Who do I pointed at? Oh, that. Yeah, back here. Point back here? I don't know. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> So this is the Declaration of a World Changer. We said it um, before prayer at mealtimes. And it was kind of like our personal motto. And it says, today, I will live honorably through my thoughts, actions, and speech. I choose to be full of faith. I will not only be a hearer, but a doer of the word of God. I will serve before I demand. I will love and not hate. And I will give before I take. Today, I choose to make a difference in this world and to be a part of something bigger than myself. I choose to dedicate my life to prayer and ask God for his miraculous power and the courage to do the impossible. I will make godly relationships a priority in my life as I esteem others higher than myself. Today, I will live my life in such a way that I will change the world. That's how we said it every real time. Um, and it's just really good because when we were tired and when we were getting frustrated, it's like, why are we here? That's why we're here. Like, keep pointing us back to the focus. Um, <laughs> hold it down. Which way? I just hold it. Hold the button. Oh, hold it. It was working. I don't know what you did to it. There, there you go. go. <laughs> okay. Um, we have every global trip has global partners. So, in Alaska, our global partners are. Sam and Rob are the, the men in the family and their families. Um, and we go up there and partner with them. So we go up and help them out because they've built relationships with people and they have lived there and they know what's going on. Um, Last Frontier Ministries is based in Healy, Alaska. Healy is about two hours outside of Fairbanks, like to the south. And it's a nonprofit organization created out of the vision of two families in 2008 for the purpose of assisting those that are in spiritual, physical, and medical need in Alaska's interior, that's like the center of Alaska, and to those around the world. Um, Sam 
who's over here on the left side. He is a, a, he's licensed in the Assembly of God as a pastor. He's a nurse in Fairbanks, and he's an EMT in Healy. Chris is his wife. She's a stay-at-home mom. She coordinates and plans trips. Um, she did a lot of the food for us, like she planned out our meals and stuff when we were up there. And they have three kids. And the Graham family on the right side, Rob is a bush pilot. He's an EMT and he's a pastor and youth pastor. And his wife, TC, I think that's how you say her name. She's a stay-at-home mom and she homeschools their two oldest kids and they have five kids. Um, the Grams have been involved in mission since 2004. And the Kimmel family has been involved in mission since 1996, and then they've been with Team Mania, or Global Expeditions, um, trip since 2004. So they know what they're doing in missions. And so their ministry tries to go out and do evangelism, discipleship, um, construction and building needs, health and medical stuff, um, mission opportunities, and just meeting the needs of daily living. So food gathering, they split wood, they help do laundry, like whatever needs done, they do it. Um, I'm going to drink really fast. <laughs> um, and it's really exciting because I was talking with Sam a little bit about this when I was up there. And they're starting to train with YWAM to be able to have a school of missions in Alaska. And this would train people to go out to the villages and share the gospel. Right now, um, they work with four villages, and you'll hear more about those. But, but again, there's 280 villages, and two families can't do that all. It's a lot. So, let's see. Back here. Oh, I'll get behind you with by the end of it, maybe. Aspen, can you just switch to the next yeah. slide? <laughs> okay, this is my team. Um, our project director is Aaron. He's in the top. Zoe is the one on the right corner. She's our team leader. She's awesome. That's such a funny picture of her. When we got up there, when I flew up to Alaska, we had a couple weeks of training. Or not a couple weeks, a couple days of training. And... They're like, we're going to be working in two villages. We're going to be working in Rampart, and we're going to be working in Minto. Well, okay, hold on, let me back pedal. They're working in three villages, Ninana, Minto, and Rampart. And in Ninana, it's a bigger town, so there was a youth group that came up from Texas that had like 26 people, so they sent them to Ninana. So with our team, there was like 50 of us that had just not come with anyone. We just kind of flew up on our own. And they were going to decide like who was going to Rampart and who was going to Minto. Rampart's very small. It has about 50 to 60 people in the summertime. Um, you have to drive three hours up to the Yukon River, and then you have to go three hours down the river to get there. And ever since I heard about that, like I was like, I want to go to the Rampart team. I want to go to the Rampart team. And but I didn't tell anyone because I was like, I, I want to do what Jesus wants ultimately. But I just felt this call for real part. I was like, man, I don't know what this is. But um, So eventually we got our um, placements or whatever. They said, you're going to real part. You're going to be the missionary advisor. So I'm in charge of three girls younger than me. And I was like, yes, real part. So they only have 10 of us go total. And so we have the project director the team leader. Galen is on in the group picture. He's on the right side. He's the cook. He protects us women. Um, he's the jack of all trades. He's just, he has very much has a servant's heart. And then for our team, we have Chase, who's, well, I'm going to start playing now because it's going to take too long. But Chase, Chad, Derek, me, and then Courtney, Rachel, and Lexi. And those was, um, those were they call us Team Bold, is what, because um, they pray, the trip leaders pray before we get there about like what our name is, and they picked Bold, and um, because of love, do, was our motto. Um, and as we journeyed and waited out our instructions, we all got really close, and we had our disagreements for sure, <laughs> and frustrations, just like any family, but even more than that, we laughed, and we loved, and we had great talks and discussions, like I miss these kids so much, and I only knew them for two weeks. Um, let's see. 
So yeah, so we headed to Rampart, and we, well, no. Um, there we go. Did you do it? Or did I, I did it. You did it. <laughs> but I'm just not going to use this. I'll tell you where to go. Um, after the other teams had departed on Saturday morning, our team, team, say Team Bold, um, stayed in Fairbanks for a couple more days because they were having a huge wedding in Rampart, and nobody did just want a bunch of white people sitting there watching them. So they were having their wedding, and then we were going to go Monday. So, um, Saturday we spent the day at Fairbanks Rescue Mission, and we were just sorting recyclables, um, like taking the caps off of bottles and making sure that all the plastic was sorted because they raised money for a homeless shelter there. And so we did that for a couple hours. We got to get a tour of the facility, and we got to have lunch with some of the people that lived there. And that was just a lot of fun. Like, I've never had so much fun sorting bottles in my life. Because normally that's kind of boring. But we did bags and bags and bags of them. Um, and it was kind of funny because Brian, the guy that was in charge of us, and he kind of was giving us instructions. He was an Eagles fan, so that worked out just fine. <laughs> he said, you're my favorite because you like Eagles. <laughs> you can go to the next one now. Sunday, we wanted to go to church. Um, and we found a native church service to go to. Now, it's kind of funny because everything in Alaska is very different. So we think our church services are long. Well, you go to Alaska, you sleep in, all right, because it's daylight all day round. You usually stay until 2 or 3 in the morning, and then you go to bed and wake up at 10 in the morning. That's it. Like, that's what people do. So Sunday we slept in, which was great because Friday night, or Thursday night when I flew in, I was going on three hours of sleep. Most of you know I don't do well on lack of sleep. So I texted people, I was like, be praying for me because I do not want to be grouchy.